Hello again from Concordia University Library. During pre-residency, you learn the basics of library databases and full text. Today, I will cover requesting full text of print articles, ebooks, the Leachy Program Guide Online, and answer some frequently asked questions. Before I talk more about the library, let's go back to PsycInfo and learn more about library databases and finding full text. In the last video, you skipped articles that weren't available electronically. Now, I will explain how to request those articles and use Primo to find known articles and books. Here we are in PsycInfo. You might remember this search from the pre-residency video. When I click on the link to this article, it takes me to a page in Primo, which asks me to log in. This is how I know that this is the article I am needing to request from another library. In order to request this article, we'll go through three steps. First, I will double check the article information in the database and make sure the article is a scholarly peer review research article or literature review, not a book review or magazine article. If you're not sure, ask a librarian. Let's take a look at this article in PsycInfo. As we scroll down in the article information, we can check the methodology that will tell us the type of article we have. This is an empirical study which meets the requirements for this assignment. Under publication type, we can see this is a peer-reviewed journal. So both of those indicate that this is a scholarly peer-reviewed article and would meet the requirements for my assignment. And I'm ready to request this article. Underneath the article, you will see the form for interlibrary loan. You'll click there. Here it will ask you for your name, your phone number, and your email. That is where we will send you a digital copy of the article once we receive it. In the boxes, you can copy and paste the article information. Typically, the easiest thing to do is copy this top box from Primo and paste it right into the box in the interlibrary loan form. Click Submit, and that's it. You'll receive a, an email in 24 hours letting you know if we can get the article. In most cases, you will just receive the article in one to three days. Now we can switch gears to talk about the Leachy Guide. I have it opened here. You can access the Leachy Guide at research.cuw.edu slash leachy. I'm going to point out some important features of the guide, which I think you'll find helpful. The first link you'll find under three things every student should know is the, the connect page, which I talked about at the end of the pre-residency video. So if you had issues connecting to databases or accessing full text, you'll definitely want to check out that guide here. Under search tools, you'll use this link fairly often, almost every day as a student. Um, you have access here to the Leachy databases page, which you use during pre-residency. You also have the search tools page which I just want to cover quickly here. So again, here's a link to all the databases, um, not just the Leachy ones. Um, we have Primo, which is the search tool that you accessed here. This is Primo. So if you're looking for a specific item, um, a book, a journal article, a journal title, a video, you will search for those items by title in Primo here. There's also specific options for finding individual items. Um, you can use Google Scholar to search for full text for items, as well as locate specific journals. So there are different parts of Primo that you can access directly through the links on this page. Finally, the special services link takes you step by step through all of the features and services available to off-campus students. So where to, e to mail your books back, orientation videos, how to access your library account, how to search for specific items, accessing and reading electronic journal articles, which we cover during the res pre-residency video, um, getting help, so ways to contact the library, as well as more information about the off-site delivery. So that's when we mail items to you and you mail them back to us. Um, so instructions for how to do that as well. So those three um, links up here, you'll use the most frequently as you go through the program. Um, this next section here is most helpful during the first two courses, EDG 940 and 980. They will teach you how to use Zotero, a citation manager, which will help you create bibliographies, as well as create a library of sources, which you'll build as you um, 
create a literature review for your dissertation. The using databases tutorial will give you um, more search techniques and tools you can use for effective searching than what we talked about in the pre-residency video. And strategic reading covers how to efficiently read research and scholarly writing. The next section is reserved for your research seminars and builds on the previous section with more advanced skills to support your dissertation work specifically. So we have a literature review section which goes through the process of defining your topic, creating a search strategy, and um, analyzing sources. Um, the positionality and research tutorial goes through um, information about how your personal identity and professional experience influence your research topic. So you might find that interesting. Um, the scholarship um, port tutorial is coming soon and it will cover how to manage your literature and data, choosing methods, and ways to publish and share your work. Um, the other area you'll want to look at right away is the avoiding plagiarism section. This section covers the basics of paraphrasing and citing as well as has some um, tools for self-assessing your own paraphrasing and citing um, knowledge. Um, you also will find information about proofreading, so lists of steps to proofread your own work as well as common grammatical errors. Um, so I definitely recommend all students check this out. You'll find um, information about APA style and templates for citations here under the citation help button here. Finally, at the bottom of the page, you'll find different places to access help throughout the university. The first option is Ask a Librarian, which is where, how you contact librarians or request a research consultation. We'll talk about a little bit later when I cover the FAQs about what librarians can help you with. Um, you'll also find links to the Writing Center, Blackboard Support, and IT, which provide help with Microsoft Office, computer issues, technical issues, as well as um, problems in Blackboard like broken course links or other um, issues you might have. So we provide those all um, on the Leachy Guide for your convenience, so it's all in one place. The easiest way to save database searches is through a database provider account. Database providers like EBSCOhost offer free accounts you can use to save searches and articles. Because the three biggest Leachy databases are EBSCO, we recommend creating an EBSCOhost account. Well, let's look at the steps now. Click Sign In at the top of any EBSCOhost database like PsycInfo. Either connect your Google account or create a unique username and password. We're going to use the Google option. Now you can see I'm signed into my EBSCO account. To save my search, I click on Search History, and you will see the searches that you completed during this section. To save any searches, click Save Searches, and it will show you the search that you're saving. Um, you can give the search a name, so we'll call this mental health programs or a description. It will enter the date you used and what databases you searched. And we click save. And then in your my folder, you'll find the save search under saved searches. Um, you can also save individual items. So if we go back to our search here, here's my results. Let's say I want to add items to a folder. Um, I can go ahead and do that using the folder icon here. And then it will create a folder for me. Here's my three articles and those are going to be saved to my EBSCOhost account. You can also create new folders and give them unique names to make it easier to sort through your articles for specific assignments. So let's say I want this to be residency articles. And then I can add um, items to that specific folder. So I'm gonna 
click on those three articles that I have saved and I'm going to move to my residency articles folder. So that's how you use your My EBSCO host account. Let's review how to find books by title in Primo. From the Leachy Guide, we'll click on Discover Which Tool. This will take us to the Search Tools Guide. You can also find this page at the top of any page in the Research Guides. From here, we will go to Primo, because that is where we search for individual items. Let's say we're looking for the book Leadership, Theory, and Practice. From the drop-down options, we want to choose everything to make sure we're searching all the collections the library has. Here we found the book. You can see there are four versions of the book. Underneath the item, you will see there are no online links, but only find in request. If we had the book um, online, you would see online, or you would see a list of options available. We click on the four versions you can see there's different editions of the book from 2019 to 20, 2004 so from here we need to determine if any of the books are available in um, a switch library so let's look at the first edition available what i'm looking for is the list of institutions under the items under the sign it in item which tells me that i will need to request this from another library i can see it's available at one of our lending partners that means I can log into Primo and request the item by mail. So I'm going to go ahead and log in with my portal login. And here you can see now we have options here. Um, because it is available through Switch, I'm going to go ahead and click on Switch Request. It's going to fill in the item information for me. If you only want a specific article uh, chapter requested, so if you just want an article scanned and emailed to you, um, you can fill out the chapter information. So like, let's say I want chapter two. Um, that way you can request a digital scan as well. If you would like the full item mailed to you, um, you would click, you would type in home delivery into the additional information. That way we will mail it home to you and you would click send request. If you don't see any digital copies of that item, you most likely don't have a digital copy. And the only option would be to request the item by mail or to have a chapter scanned and digitally requested. Let's use this book as an example for how to save and print ebooks. This book is available in both of our main ebook providers, ebook central and EBSCOhost. Let's start with ebook central. At the top of ebook central, it will give you the option to download the book. I'm going to ask you not to do this because then the book will not be available for other students. Instead, you'll want to download chapters of the book based on your needs. So if we scroll down to the table of contents, let's say we want the first chapter. You can download a PDF of that chapter. That way the book will be available for other students and you won't need any special software to access the book. If you download full copies of eBooks, you will need a special software to read them. Um, from here, we will download the copy um, and then you can open, save, or print this PDF as you wish. If you would like to download a section of the book, let's say you only need a few pages from chapter one, Go ahead and click on the chapter title. This will open to um, the first page of that chapter. From there, you can also print to PDF. So again, let's say I only want pages uh, 1 to 27, 34. You can see you will be limited by a daily limit of pages. So in this case, this book, you can only download and print 47 pages per day. So again, we would create a PDF, open that PDF and save it or print it. So that is how you would save or print in eBook Central. EBSCOhost is fairly similar. 
So here's our book here. We're going to go down to our table of contents. Let's say we want chapter one again. It's going to open the book at chapter one. So I can save the pages here. It will give me the option to save the current page, um, save a range of pages. So from the current page to the next 10 pages or the section relates to the chapter itself. So whenever it says this section, that means that that chapter one is nine pages and save as a PDF, and then you can save and download as you need to. So that is how you would save or print an ebook. At the library, we believe that learning to create successful and correct citations is an important part of being a student and a responsible scholar. For that reason, we typically don't help with citations. Let me show you how to find a generated citation from a database like PsycInfo. On almost all items within the database, you will see the cite tool on the left or the right hand side. From here, you will choose APA 7th edition and you can see that the database gives you a citation. Once you highlight the citation, you right click and you can copy it and paste it into any program like Microsoft Word. We also offer citation guides to help you with templates. So let's go back to the Lychee program guide. Go back, here we are. Um, if you'll recall, under the Avoiding Plagiarism section, we have two resources to help you with citations. The Learning to Paraphrase tool is nice. So it will show you the original source, um, how, how um, not to paraphrase that item, as well as what it might look like when you correctly cite it in APA. Um, so it includes the citation format, um, as well as what the in-text citation should look like. The other resource is our citation help guides. So here you click on the citation help button. It's going to open the citation resources page. From there, you'll see the APA style guide. On this page, the APA style tutorial will take you through document setup as well as the basics of citing, as well as styles such as writing, and, um, and other th factors related to APA. There's also the APA checklist, which is a nice PDF that goes through each part of the student format. So student title page, all the sections of the paper, how they should be ordered, what the font requirements are, writing style, language, mechanics, grammar, tables and figures, as well as in text citations and references for the most common types of sources. Finally, on the APA Citation Style Guide, you'll find reference examples provided by UWM Libraries. So for example, if I'm looking for journal articles, you can see they will give you the general citation uh, format as well as some examples. Now there are different types of journal articles. So for example, this one is has a DOI with one author, a DOI with two or more authors, no DOI, um, so be sure to check all of the different examples on the journal articles templates to make sure you're using the correct one for your article. Um, that is a question you can ask a librarian so we can help you choose the correct template. We can also help you if you're missing citation information or your um, source doesn't follow traditional citation templates. So maybe um, you're missing information such as the page or issue number. Um, we can also help you with citation managers. So on the citation resources page, you'll see we have both Zotero and Mendeley. Um, you can make a research consultation appointment and we can help you set that up and work through the different features of Zotero or Mendeley with you. So those are some options we can help you with as it relates to citations.